so if you've seen my 20 things you should know before owning rats video, today I wanted to make one about mice. Is it coming up? Good boy! So by no means is this a full on care video, it's important to know that if you are thinking about getting mice you should go away and do your own research after watching this video, but I just wanted to say a few things that I thought were important to know if you're considering getting mice or if you've already got mice already. You have to sit with me for this video, because it's about you. This video also is aimed to put you off. Mice can make really great pets, but for the right person. So number one is that they have a very short lifespan. They have one of the shortest lifespans of domesticated rodents, and it's about one to two years. Of course you can get ones that live shorter than this or longer than this, but it is a very short lifespan. So you need to think about whether such a short lifespan is something that you can cope with. Number two is that they are very delicate animals, so their size and fragility may not be something that will make them great pets for very small children. Number three is that generally they are very active animals, so if you're looking for a pet to cuddle with, they're probably not the best pet for you. Number four is that generally they are most active during the evening, so you need to think about whether this is something that will fit into your lifestyle. Number five is that despite the saying as quiet as a mouse, they can make quite a lot of noise at night time, so if you're thinking about keeping them in your bedroom, you may want to reconsider this if you're a light sleeper and you don't want to be woken up by the noise. So moving on to illnesses, number six is that they can develop respiratory issues and linked into this is number seven and that is that you need to be careful about what bedding you use. Now everyone's going to have a different preference of what bedding they prefer to use, but as long as you're using a safe bedding that is just extracted and preferably not pine or cedar as they are the bedding that <laughs> So you want to avoid bedding such as pine or cedar. What are you chewing? Are you chewing my jumper? Number eight is that females especially are prone to tumours, so you want to think about having some money set aside if this does occur. I'm putting Fig back because he is not enjoying this. Number nine is that mice can sometimes enter a state called torpor. Now this is similar to hibernation, but you'll most likely find your mouse lethargic in the corner of their cage, and this can be caused by a lack of food or water supply, or because the temperatures have dropped and your mouse has got extremely cold. Now if you find your mouse like this, you want to get them as warm as possible and the easiest way to do this is to hold them against your own body warmth and you also want to try and get liquids in them so it's important to have a syringe on hand that you can syringe feed them water and try and get them back to their usual state. Number 10 is that mice can get overweight very quickly so you want to try and limit the amount of treats you give them as ultimately this can affect their quality of life. My neighbour is staring at me. Number 11 is that when it comes to handling them, you want to avoid picking them up by their tail. Of course, in some situations, if your mouse is in danger and there's no other way to pick them up, the safest way to do this is to pick them up by the base of the tail and not the tip of the tail because you can break their tail and ultimately cause them harm. But I wouldn't recommend using this practice to pick them up on a day-to-day -day basis because at the end of the day, you're trying to bond with your mouse and by picking up with a tail, you're not really going to build that trust that you need to have a good relationship with your pet. So number 12 is probably going to get me a lot of comments in the comment section and that is that I don't recommend you keep males together. Now this is something that both my friends who have previously owned mice and breeders of mice have recommended to me and this is because male mice are extremely territorial. Now of course there's going to be cases where male mice are kept together and it works and this is made most likely by them being siblings or by them having a large enough cage that they don't get territorial. Now mice in the wild are naturally territorial, they will live a male that protects his territory from other males with some females, but of course you can't do this in your home environment otherwise you'll end up with lots of babies. So you generally don't want to house males together unless you have another cage set aside just in case they do start fighting and you have to separate them, but chances are they will fight and injure each other and ultimately they can actually cause each other to die. If you haven't heard Fig's story, he actually came from a place where the breeder didn't have enough cages to separate the males and he was fighting with his own siblings which has caused him to have a piece of his ear missing and when he came to me, his tail was very scabby from injuries he received from his own brothers. So I generally don't advise you go out and get two males unless you know what you're doing or unless you're prepared to separate them as soon as they start fighting. So number 13 is that mice are actually very social animals, so if you are getting females, you want to keep them in groups of about two or three. Number 14 is that if you are considering getting a male mouse, be prepared for the smell. Males smell a lot more than females, and this is because they scent mark, and I really wasn't prepared for how much fig smells. Some people don't 
mind the smell but personally to me it's quite a musky smell and I don't really like that. Um, so if you are keeping them in your bedroom be prepared for a smell to build up and of course you can't use things such as air fresheners or candles because it will affect their respiratory systems. Number 15 is that they do need a decent sized cage, although they're small they are very active animals so they need enough space to run around and males will need the same size cage as a group of females because they are still just as active. So the recommended cage size does differ depending on where you're looking but about 60 by 40 centimetres is the minimum you want to be keeping one male or two or three females. So number 16 is that the bar spacing of the cage is also really important, you don't want anything bigger than a centimetre because they're very good at squeezing out of small spaces. Number 17 is that you should keep a wheel in the cage, but the wheel should be big enough that your mouse's back isn't arching because this can cause problems with their spines and ultimately your mouse is going to be uncomfortable. So you want to make sure you get a wheel that is big enough for them and I'll leave the dimensions here of an appropriate size wheel and you also don't really want to use wire wheels because their feet can get stuck in the mesh. Number 18 is be prepared to get pooed and peed on. This probably doesn't apply to everyone, but certainly since I've got Fig, I've noticed that as he's got to know me, he's doing it less, but he still is a little poop machine. There's literally one sat next to me right now, just staring me in the face. Um, so if that's not something you're comfortable with, maybe consider getting something else. But they do kind of just go wherever they feel like it. And number 19 is that they can be trained. Although they're really small, they are actually really intelligent animals. So you can train them to do some different tasks. You can train them to use a litter tray, or you can train them to do like basic tricks. And this is a fun little project you can work on with your mice. And number 20 is that although some people may think differently, I think that they are really cute and personally I really enjoy having them as a pet. I find that they have great personalities and they're really fun to watch and they will make the right pet for the right person. So that is it for the 20 things I wanted to tell you about owning mice. Of course this isn't everything you need to know, so please go ahead and do your research after watching this video. But if you do go ahead and get mice or you've already got your mice already, enjoy them and we will see you in our next video. Bye!